this module, I'm really gonna be diving in and showing you how to get more clients. And you know, from working with thousands of clients in every single niche known to man, pretty much, the number one question that all business owners and all consultants face is, how do I get more clients? And this is something that I've really, it's been a mission that I've been on to really figure this out and truly become a master of how to get more clients for any different types of, of business and specifically consultants. And you know, what you really need to understand that having a proven system that generates clients is really 80 to 90% of the battle in business. Like if you have a system that simply generates you clients on demand at will and that you can just pull down a lever and more clients come to you, then you have ultimate freedom, right? You've got stability in your business and you've got security and you've got certainty knowing that you are in control of your business and you are in the car and it is moving and you can go faster whenever you want. You just pull down on the accelerator and away you go. And having this freedom is really the holy grail of all businesses. Like, if you look at the reason that most businesses fail, and it's because they are undercapitalized. And the number one reason why businesses are undercapitalized is simply they don't have the ability to ring the cash register at high enough volumes with high enough margins in order to sustain their business. Now, you know, at this stage in the course, you're you've basically you you know what you're selling, you're kind of out there, you're you're cold calling or doing cold email outreach and really grinding it out and you've got a bunch of clients and you've got a bunch of money coming in right and this is kind of you know I've given you the steps that you need to arrive you at this point that we are at right now and this is where things completely change right I'm about to lift the lid and show you how to scale up your consultancy business and kind of you know transcend from this hourly billable rate kind of model and really take you up and level you up completely to another level Level. And you know, from dealing with hundreds and hundreds of clients and consultants over the years, this is the missing piece to the puzzle of why, you know, anybody that is going to kind of fail in business really hasn't got dialed in. And it's because they don't have a predictable and reliable stream of new customers coming into their business every single day on autopilot. So I'm going to be diving in, you know, piece by piece and really breaking down each step in this system that, you know, is going to give you this freedom and this control in your consultancy business and really stop you from, I guess, more so being in the trenches and grinding it out day to day and making cold calls and doing the hard yards and really using you know the fruits of your labor and all that hard work and foundation that you've laid up until this point and then take some of that existing money and put it to work you know there's a saying that he who buys the most bullets wins the war and what you've been doing is basically saving up those bullets and now it's basically time to go to war put all this marketing collateral into place and have customers coming to you and asking for your help to solve their problems I'm really excited to open up the curtain and show you this system and really take you to the next level. Now, throughout this course, I'm also gonna be using the terminology of funnel, right? If, if you're not clued up on what a funnel is, a funnel is basically a controlled path that you take, you know, a disinterested kind of wanderer and a prospect out there who doesn't know that they need your products and services, and then you communicate value and agitate a problem and then turn them into a lead and ultimately into a paying client. So it's the exact system and framework and the steps that take place to take a cold prospect and then turn them into a paying client. And I'm going to be breaking down each step in that process and showing you exactly how to apply it to your consulting business. Now in the next video, I'm gonna be running you through what to do at the very, very top of your funnel and before you really do anything, which is the halo strategy. So the action item for this video is to get your workbook ready, to buckle up and really just prepare yourself because we're about to transcend and take your consulting business to a whole new level.
this video, we're going to be walking through the Halo strategy. Now, before we dive into the actual specifics and how to use it and apply it to your consultancy business, one thing that I want to talk about is that, you know, what I see far too often is that people are making assumptions about their marketplace or, you know, what their prospects want or, you know, what are the pains and fears, hopes and dreams that they're experiencing and they think, oh, I already know this market, like this is what they want or this is what their age groups are and they're in the making all these assumptions you know about their marketplace and even some of the best copywriters and business owners and consultants in the world have never gone through a process like this to truly understand what is going through their prospects minds and what are those kind of number one burning hair on fire questions that, that, that are keeping them up at night and tossing and turning and really like I guess all the pains and fears that they're really having and all you know the desires and their deepest most primal wants that, they, that they're wanting to achieve, they're not clear on these and they're just thinking that they know them without ever doing the market research. So what the Halo strategy allows you to do is really kind of transplant yourself into the mind of your prospects and allows you to basically have a look at what questions are they asking, what are their biggest pain points and what is it they really want to achieve. And using this simple framework and going through the steps that I'm about to walk you through, you're going to have a walk away with more data and more consumer insight than 99% of your marketplace. And it is he who understands his prospects and his market more than anyone else is the person that will win the market. And that's literally what I'm going to be arming you to do right now. So what you can see up on the screen right now is my Halo strategy template. And essentially all you need to do is go in and pre-fill all of this information with the data that we're about to obtain by going through this whole process. So what you can see is here how we've got hopes and dreams and then it's got most common, second most frequent and third most frequent. So what we're going to be really doing is we're going to be researching online to find out, you know, what are the number one questions that people are having in this market? You know, what are they thinking about? What do they want to achieve? What are their desires? And we're going to basically be putting all of that information into this template to reference throughout what we're going to be doing in this video. So here here where you want to, essentially what you want to do here in column one where it says most common and it says hopes and dreams, is you want to have a look through these forums and you know on these boards and in these communities and on these different resources that we're going to be running through and you want to be listing out like what are the most common things that are keep coming up for that, like what is it that they're doing this for, right? What are their hopes and dreams? What are those things that they're looking to obtain out of this, okay? So where we really want to start with the Halo strategy is basically by thinking what is the number one bullseye or money keyword in your space that most of the people are typing in onto Google in order to find your services. You know what I mean? If you're a health coach, for instance, you know, they might be typing in health coach or wellness coach and or maybe the symptoms around that. Like what is that number one keyword that people are searching for to find the answers? Or, you know, one of the things that they might be looking for help with is you know how to increase their energy or how to lose weight and essentially that's the kind of string or keyword that they're going to be typing in on Google in order to find the answers and to start that research phase. Now once you've kind of thought about you know the number one keyword in your space it may be two or three um, then basically what you want to do is you want to move across to a website and a resource called answerthepublic.com. Now this is an absolute absolute gold mine and it's probably one of the most underutilized piece of information for, for marketers and consultants out there and essentially what it allows you to do it allows you to type in you know that number one bullseye or money keyword and it spits out all of the questions that people are really asking about you know that service and all of the different things that are related to that search term online so for this instance let's just say that you know you're a wellness coach and you know you're a health coach and you know, obviously just the word health coach or wellness coach is too broad. It's, we, we don't want to pray, paint it with such broad brush strokes. We want to nail down, right? As a health or wellness consultant, I imagine that there'll be a number of different services that people would be wanting help with. So say for instance, someone is looking to increase the amount of energy that they've got. You know, you would jump on to this website 
and type in increase energy and then click on get questions. So it will take a little while to kind of populate these but what you'll see is that it's going to essentially populate this with all the aggregate search data from both Google and Bing and show you all the questions surrounding that keyword of increase energy and, and what are the questions that people are really asking online and what are the most common questions, right? This is a really incredibly powerful tool. You know, a a great marketer, Robert Collier once said, you want to enter the conversation that is already taking place in your customer's mind. And there is no better way to enter that conversation to know the questions and the conversation that's actually taking place. And this literally gives you that data. There is no filter. It's direct, you know, keyboard to Google and being showing you exactly the most frequently asked questions. So in this instance, you can come here and you'll see up the top it's got questions, presuppositions, comparisons alphabeticals and it gives you all the different things that are going on and what you want to do is really just click along to the questions section and it will show you in the middle you can see increase energy and then it will say where will which when and it will give you all the different kind of areas off that so you know there's a questions like will cardio increase my energy you know and you know what will increase my energy? There's a whole bunch of questions. And there's people asking how to increase energy efficiency in home, which is obviously related to power and not your, your, your basically energy of your actual person. Um, how to increase energy fast, how to increase energy levels fast, how to increase energy during pregnancy, how to increase energy and motivation, how to increase energy and stamina. So there's a whole bunch of it. You can see like a big key thing is fast. People being able to increase their energy fast. And the whole thing about that is you really just want to go through and have a look at all that data. So you've got a visual representation, what you can see up on the screen. But then what you can also do is come up to the top here where it says data. And then it will basically just give you them all in a nice list format. And it even allows you just to download them into a CSV file that you can always reference when you're basically going through this process. So you really like want to read through this and find out like what are those number one things that people are asking and you know what's going on here. Um, you know other things people are asking, you know what to increase energy, what foods increase energy, what factors increase energy expenditure. So there's, I could go on and on with all all the different types of questions but basically what you want to do is you want to have a read of those and you really want to start to get an understanding of what are those things and those common threads that keep coming up. Now once you know what some of those questions are then what you want to do is you want to put them into the Halo strategy template and worksheet that I've got here right so what you can see up on a screen is an exact Halo strategy template that we use when we're doing our market research in my own business right and basically once you've got those questions, then you want to go to things like Google and you want to type in, you know, how to increase energy fast. And what you're looking for is like forums and, you know, rooms where people are talking about certain things and you want to see like what are the comments that they're saying? Like what are the most common occurring problems that people are talking about in forums online? And then you want to go to across to YouTube and type in, you know, how to increase energy fast, for instance, and look at the most viewed YouTube videos in that niche and then scroll down to the comments section and again look at what people are saying what is the most common trend that is coming up right what and and then basically once you find what those most common things are you want to populate them into this spreadsheet that you can see so this spreadsheet's broken down into like hopes and dreams pains and fears barriers and uncertainties so whenever you kind of notice something that's coming up and you can see that there's a further free columns on the other axis it says most common second most frequent and third most frequent what you want to do once you're popping populating this spreadsheet is, is start to put in those things that you know fit into the hopes and dreams section and that is the most commonly frequently coming up all the time and then the second most frequent and the third most frequent and you want to start building this thing out so you've got really great comprehensive answers for all of these and you'll notice that there is a trend right and you want to basically rank those things like at the end you've got score of importance 
So, you know, you can essentially put your own score of, of how important that you think that those things are. So there might be a common trend of, you know, how to increase my energy without supplements. That might be a very, very important factor for you. So you want to grade that, you know, a 10 out of 10 of importance. And then there might be one of like, you know, how to increase energy while taking coffee or you know while having caffeine or there may be all these other questions that may not may not be as important and you can want to give them a lower score and essentially the the places that are my go-to for doing this research is first google then you want to look on forums and you want to read the comments you essentially really want to look at like what are the longest comments and the most engaged people in that space then you want to move to youtube look at the most watched videos then from there, a really good tip is to go and have a look at Amazon, right? Have a look at, you know, what are the most popular books sold in about, you know, increasing your energy and have a look at what the five star comments are saying and, you know, what they really like about the book and the value that they got out of it and the information that really helped them. And then look at the one star reviews and see what people are saying is missing, right? And then, you know, once you've done that, there's a multitude of sites that you can essentially look at, but you essentially those sites will square away most of it and just really gathering that data putting it into the spreadsheet and you'll find out that you really know like what those pains and fears hopes and dreams are and the most primal desires of your marketplace and the things that they want to achieve and this will really help us in the next step in kind of creating some bait for that market that specifically answers and addresses the number one questions that people are having in your marketplace. And you'll also notice that at the bottom of the Halo strategy template is an area that says glossary of verbiage, jargon, and niche specific term or language. So it's very important that when you're doing your research online, kind of, you know, if you see terms and, and niche specific language that keeps on coming up. So, you know, if you're researching, you know, how to increase energy, you might find out that a lot of people are using the word keto or ketogenic and increasing energy with the ketogenic diet. And it's really important that you put those words into this glossary and that you can basically call upon them and use them in your copy and in your ads and on your landing pages to really show that you're an insider and you understand how this market thinks and how it communicates. So there you have it. Basically what you should do now is go ahead and download the Halo strategy template, do the market research right now while this is all still fresh in your mind, populate it into that spreadsheet and we'll see you in the next video. So in this video, I'm going to be walking you through how to create a high value content offer. Now, a high value content offer is simply that, a high value piece of content that you give away in exchange for somebody's contact details. And it's really like, you know, an ethical bribe of getting someone's contact details in exchange for a piece of information. But where do you start? Like how do you create this piece of information? What kind of information should you even be putting together? So what is the best type of high value content offer that you can create? Well, the quickest and the easiest one is a free report. And essentially what you want to be doing is looking at all of those questions that people were asking when we did the halo strategy technique and what the most frequent burning questions were and what were the pains that they were having and what was that question that just kept on coming up over and over again, right? That everyone in your market just wanted to know. And what was the most desired outcome that they kept on, like what were their, you know, hopes and dreams? What was that thing they kept on, like if I could just increase my energy with this or if only I could do this to achieve X result. And basically you want to use that information and use those questions in titling your free report. So for instance, you might be, you know, a PR consultant and you're wondering like what is the best high value content offer to really produce for your marketplace. Again, do not make any assumptions on these things. The whole reason that we walked through the Halo strategy technique is so you could find out exactly the questions that your market is asking and the things that the solutions that they're looking for so you basically want to dress up the title of that free report in a way that it is super compelling so th that's where a lot of people get wrong right a lot of people you know may use the term lead magnet or you know other things in in the form of a free report or a high value content offer and they're like yeah I tried that 
and people weren't banging down my door throwing money at me. And, and, and that's because like that's, you know, you can't just create a free report that's vanilla like, you know, if you're interested in PR, these are some things that you should know. It's just too vanilla. It's, it's not going to strike a chord with anyone. You need to think of titling that, that report in a way that is really the cheese for that market. And it's that thing that people want the most. So, you know, it might be like, you know, a four step system on how to get your business featured in Forbes, the Huffington Post and Elite Daily in the next seven days. Right. That is like an irresistible high value content offer. Anyone that's kind of wanting to get more press for their business, they are going to want to know how to do that. Right. That's a very, very good irresistible offer. And really what you need to know is that creating these free reports and these high value content offers, you know, it's not like you just want to create this report and, you know, it's this kind of like shitty little report that doesn't give away any real value. And, you know, it's just like they download it and it's a promotion piece on your company. That is the wrong way to approach it. This is the very first transaction that you are making with your marketplace, right? You are selling this piece of content in exchange for their contact details and you need to deliver and you need to have that wow factor with your high value content offer. It needs to blow them away with the value that you're providing. It doesn't need to be your life's work. It doesn't need to be some 30 page epic thesis. It simply needs to be small actionable bite-sized content that they can implement and get instant wins, get some quick wins on the board and then it leaves the question in their mind of wow, like is they, if they're giving this information away for free, imagine what they'd be giving away you know, on their paid services. So you really, I, I want to make that clear distinction is like this needs to be actionable and there needs to be a lot of value in it. You cannot cheat people. This is a whole thing about creating a lot of value in your marketplace and creating a lot of goodwill and you will be compensated handsomely for doing this process correctly. So the different types of high value content offers that you could use, as I said, are free reports, cheat sheets, swipe files, you know, roadmaps, anything that you can essentially tie some content around that's going to be a quick, easy win. You can also, there's more commitment with what you're asking for. You could look at doing a video series or a webinar, you know, or a mini course. However, what you really need to think about is is just getting the wheel moving and the quickest and the easiest type of high value content offer to create is definitely a free report and it's definitely the place that I suggest that you start and once you've kind of done a few of them and you've got some momentum and you've got clients coming in then you can start to get creative and make something perhaps a little bit more substantial. So after you've done that research in your marketplace and you've found out like what those common you know questions that keep on coming up now once you've kind of written the title for what that high value content offer is going to be. Now I want you to increase the volume and the desire and the intrigue for that. So say for instance, you may be a web designer and you know, one kind of, you know, high value content offer and free report that I've used in my own business is, you know, the 22 money murdering mistakes that no web designer would dare tell you. Or you may be, you know, a wedding photographer and you know, the six little known things that no wedding photographer would ever tell you before taking your deposit. Or you might be creating like a cheat sheet for like a mortgage provider and it may be like, you know, the four little known things that no bank would tell you of how to reduce your rate on your mortgage. And what you really want to do, it's kind of like X ways to Y and you want to use numbers in the title of your free report. The reason why is that numbers give your mind a mental object to kind of wrap around and kind of go, I wonder what those five things are. You know, think about how much more compelling it sounds is like, you know, the six little known things that no web designer would dare tell you as opposed to you know some things that web designers won't tell you you know having that number six on there is really I wonder what they are there's a bit of intrigue around it so you want to use words like shocking and alarming and little known and those things that you can really kind of you know spice up the title and make it a little bit more irresistible it can't be like you know just generic and lackluster because it will just be ignored in a sea of lame offers so you you really want to kind of dial it up, use the language and verbiage that your marketplace is using. And the most important thing is to really isolate that number one hair on fire question and having that in the title of your free report or promising the solution to that problem in your, you know, your high value content offer. 
Now, once you've got, you know, one high value content offer, you know, as I said, if you're like a wellness coach and you're just kind of, you know, you're not gonna be able to type wellness coach into these things and find all the keywords. It's too vague and it's too broad, right? So what you'll find is that there'll be common threads in your marketplace. One might be how to lose weight, how to increase energy, how to have a better sleep, you know, and all of those different things. And essentially what you would want to do is create multiple high value content offers for all those specific symptoms that your, you know, your marketplace is having. But you can always add them as you get further down the track. The number one thing to think about is, you know, what is that dream buyer look for you? What does that ideal client look like? And what is the cheese? What is the thing that that market wants? And then creating your first high value content offer around that specific one. And then you can just tack on other high value content offers to ensure that you're bringing in multiple clients from multiple different sources. So at this stage, really what you want to be doing is kind of writing out the titles of, you know, possible ideas for high value content offers and really just kind of getting creative and having some fun with it and, and kind of trying to make it as irresistible as, as possible. Do you know what I mean? You might be a dating consultant and you might have like, you know, the 11 things that all newly divorced dads must know about online dating. You may be an accountant and it may be, you know, the six hidden loopholes from a retired tax attorney that shows you how to not pay a cent in taxes or you know basically just think about what it is that that person is trying to do you know you might be a financial planner and someone that's kind of you know looking to invest in property for instance and it may be you know our seven step proven property formula for how you can buy your first 10 homes in the next 10 years you know you just have to think about like what is that desired outcome that that person wants and that market wants and and really speak to what those things are you know what I mean or if, if you're in the weight loss space you might be like you know six little known foods that are causing you to get fat or you know five different types of fruit that you can eat that will accelerate fat loss and you just want to think about what is kind of like that hook that you can go out to your marketplace and and, and put a high value content offer around and really bring those people in right how to lose 22k or how to lose 10 kgs in the next 90 days without spending hours on the treadmill and basically just come up with a few ideas and you know you want to write out at least kind of 10 to 15 of these and maybe show your friends think about them yourself and think about what would be the most irresistible for you if you were in the marketplace. Now the action item for this video is what I want you to do is basically pull out your workbook and come up with 10 to 15 different ideas for a high value content offer that you could do. Maybe and come up with you know a different high value content offer for different segments of your market and really think about what is the most irresistible high value content offer that you could put that would have people not being able to move past that and without downloading it, without giving you their contact details. So go ahead and do that now, list them out and we'll see you in the next video. So why would we create a high value content offer, right? Like why not just go out to the market and go straight for a consult? And the reason is that, you know, in any given market, 3% of people are looking to buy now, right? So I've got a method called the larger market formula. And that's the graphic that you can see up on your screen right now. And basically what that isolates is that, you know, in any given market for anything, there's always only 3% of people that are looking to buy now. And realistically, if you went out there, even with something like just a free consult, you know, your conversion rate for that kind of thing may be anywhere between kind of three to 7% really. Now, it's kind of that whole thing of the, there'll be a large percentage of your market that aren't ready to speak to you right now or haven't seen enough for you to really prove that you are the one that can help them with this. So what a high value content offer does, it basically allows you to communicate with them in a non-confrontational way, right? They don't need to speak to anybody. It's not having this threatening thing come to them and having this conversation with them. It's just giving them about a simple piece of information that solves a specific problem that they're having and further proves to them that you are the one that can help them reach that desired outcome. Further just proving that you can do that without actually jumping on the phone and actually speaking to them. So more so to that point as well, 
is that you really need to think about like where that person's at in their research phase, right? And if only three to kind of seven percent of people would take you up on a consult, let's run you through like what kind of conversion rates do you get on like a high value content offer? And you know, why would you use this? And the analogy that I always tie it back to really is the dating analogy. You know, if you're kind of out there, and this is something that I just see like prevalent in all the industry, in all of business, and specifically with consultants is that they're really just out there asking people to buy straight out the gate and that's the equivalent to walking into a bar and asking a woman to marry you so like you're gonna have very little success if you do that and that's essentially what they're doing they're like here's my landing page just buy something off me straight away you know what you really want to be doing is going into that bar you know perhaps buying the girl a drink and then there's logical steps of progressions what that's going to take to and, and and really that what that's what that high value content offer is. It's that very first step in that journey and you know just solving a basic problem that they have right now to take them to that next step. So basically what we've found is that like this is not just my opinion, right? I haven't just come up with this crazy idea and I've deployed it and, and, and that's about it. No, this has been literally proven from spending tens of millions of dollars in media spend in multiple different segments in multiple different markets in over 126 different niches. And this strategy works in every single case. So what we've found is that let me just run you through a scenario real quick, okay? Let's just say that, you know, we're getting a hundred people to our landing page. So we've got a basic landing page. We're out there either from Google or Facebook or Instagram ads, whatever the medium is, that doesn't matter. And we bring those hundred people through to a page. And on that page, it's just got, you know, get in contact, get in touch. That's what most consultants have, right? And what we've typically found is that those offers converted around 3%, right? Some people might be saying, yeah, mine's more, or there might be some people saying mine's less, but on average, it's around 3%. That's pretty typical. Okay, so meaning that you would get about three leads from those 100 visitors coming into your site. And out of those three leads, let's say that you've got a 30% close rate, which we've found is pretty standard for an inbound lead, generating you one sale, okay? Now, let's walk through scenario number two. And we're still getting the same 100 visitors coming through to our landing page. However, this time, instead of going straight for the get in touch or contact us, we've got a high value content offer there that addresses the number one most burning question that that market is having. And what we've found is that these convert at 25% and upwards, meaning that you get 100 visitors, you know, you have a 25% conversion rate, you've got 25 leads. Now, naturally, if you were calling all of these people that were downloading your high value content offer, there's less of a commitment, right? They're downloading this information that is irresistible to them. So naturally, you're going to have a lower close rate on them. And we've found that these convert, you know, at around 10 or 12%, meaning that you've got 100 visitors, 25% conversion rate, 25 leads with, say, a 12% conversion rate, and that would generate you three sales. So that's literally, that's just that one exercise alone has tripled the kind of results that you would achieve as opposed to just going straight out into that marketplace and pushing straight for a consult. So that's really kind of, that example really illustrates to you very clearly, I guess, the value of a high value content offer and where it fits in and why we specifically use it to get people to raise their hand in a sea of people as saying that they are interested in what it is that we are selling. Now in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through the Godfather strategy. Now this is the single most powerful strategy that I've ever developed for really just creating a torrential downpour of clients that will flood your business. And it's really the opposite of what I see taking place out there in the market. Now, if you think about you know, what most people are doing, now most consultants and most businesses, what they're doing is they're creating resistible offers and not irresistible offers. Like they are making the assumption that everybody is just eager to buy what it is that they're selling and that couldn't be further from the truth, right? So really what the Godfather strategy is about, it is about making an offer to your prospects that they simply can't refuse. You know, it needs to get them to sit up in their chair, it needs to get the neck, the hairs on their neck to stand out and for them to like, you know, stop them in their tracks and be like, demand their attention 
and to be so good and so irresistible that they cannot refuse it. And it's really the most important element to all this because, you know, I hear it from people all the time. They're like, yeah, I've tried doing a free report or a high value content offer and, you know, I didn't get lots and lots of clients or people weren't coming to my door waving a checkbook or throwing money at me. And the reason for it is that they're missing this crucial element where they've got the educate component, but they don't have the motivate component. So, you know, once you've kind of got this high value content offer and you've deployed it out into your marketplace and people are downloading it, after they've downloaded it, you want to arrive them on a page in your sales funnel that uses the Godfather strategy and makes them a Godfather offer and motivates them to take the next step. Think of it this way. Your high value content offer, its job is to basically get people in your market to put their hand up and raise their hand and identify themselves as being interested in what you're selling. And then your godfather offer is basically to motivate them to meet you on the telephone or face to face in person to take it to the next level and to take that next step in basically the steps that it takes in order for them to become a client. So being a consultant, we already know that it's going to involve us getting on the telephone and actually speaking to them. Therefore, our godfather offer wants to make a phone consult or a free phone consult or diagnosis an absolutely irresistible offer that they must take up so we can move the ball further up the field and get closer to landing them as a client. So being a consultant, the way that you really want to think about the Godfather strategy is about packaging up that phone consultation and getting that prospect on the telephone and really stacking the value around it and not just saying like, get a free 30 minute consultation. That's what everybody's doing, right? And if you do that, you will get no results or you'll get very limited results because you can't expect to go out there in the marketplace and do what everybody's doing and get different results. It doesn't work that way. So say for instance at my agency, the way that we've packaged it up is you know receive a $1,000 free digital marketing blueprint and then we go on to basically articulate what you're going to get in that. You know We're going to spy on your competitors. We're going to have a look at where they're getting their traffic from. We're going to have a look at your business and then we're going to identify the low-lying free in your marketplace and show you the best place to get the most high value clients in the cheapest and most cost efficient and fastest way possible. And we really dress the value up around what they're going to deliver and what we're going to deliver on those calls and we do go on to deliver them. You again can't make a promise that you can't fulfill, right? Or you may be, you know, an aged care consultant and the number one, you know, things that you may need to get that person on the phone and you might have like a high value content offer around, you know, six things that you must know before putting your before putting your parent into an aged care home or to an aged care facility. And then you know that it's going to require getting on the phone with that prospect. And you know, you might want to dress up, you know, a free 60 minute aged care home assessment where we will show you where the best aged care facilities are, how you can keep your home when you're moving into a facility, and the must haves that you put into your will to ensure that your parents are looked after. We're going to cover all this and more on your 60 minute consultation. It's usually 300 $197. However, this month we're doing them for free, right? So that is like an irresistible offer that somebody in that marketplace that has, you know, an elderly parent that they're thinking about putting into an aged care facility, they're all things that they would want to know. So I'm dressing up the value and I'm not leaving anything to chance, right? I'm not just saying, yeah, it's a 60 minute consultation and that's it right? That you have to sell everything, right? So you have to sell that consult and make the sale and then close that down. So what I want to run you through now is exactly how you can create an irresistible Godfather offer for your marketplace using the Godfather strategy where you can go out and just create offers that people can't refuse. So the first thing that I want you to do is download the template and the spreadsheet. And in that, there's going to be two different columns. In the first column, what I'm going to get you to do is list out all the different features for every single thing that it is that you sell. So so don't think about anything, just go hog wild on it and just list them all out. Punch them all down into that spreadsheet. Then once you've taken the time to do that, it shouldn't really take you any more than 30 minutes to do that exercise. And once you've done that, then in the column next to it, I want you to basically put the benefit 
that that feature translates into, right? Because you can get as technical as you want with the features, but they all must correspond to a benefit. And you might find that some of those features, you know, correspond to the same type of benefit, but you want to try to get as many of them in there as possible. Then, you know, I call this sheet the details sheet, and it's really about putting together the details of crafting up this absolutely irresistible Godfather offer. So once you've got those two items, then what you want to do is you want to start to think about those benefits, and you want to start to think about what are the steps that people must take in order to get close to those benefits. And what I want you to do is just take a clear mind and I want you to think about what is the absolute best offer that you could reduce down to writing and just start writing down your offers. Just forget about your lawyer, forget about industry regulations or your attorney or anything at this stage. What I want you to do is just think if you had a magic wand and if you could wave it and just create the most irresistible offer that just worked people up into such a frenzy that they couldn't help but they were forced to buy off you, what would that offer be? What would be the most ridiculous offer that you could offer to your marketplace? And I want you to really reduce that down to writing and just, you know, forget about all those other things for now, we'll get to them in a moment any of the kind of, you know, constraints or any legislation or legality around all that, forget all that. Just write down the most irresistible offer. And then once you've reduced it to writing and you've got a few on there and you're thinking, wow, that would be insane if I could offer that, then what I want you to do is just dial it back a little bit to something that you can legally say and that you can deliver on, right? It still needs to be irresistible. And it may only be like a splinter off your core service. You know, it may not be like the whole solution. It may just be a splinter offer. If you broke this off and you offered it as a consult or if you had it as an offer, you know, it could deliver on that promise that you're making. And that's really what you want to think about. You want to reduce it down to writing, then peel it back a little bit to something that you're confident that you can deliver on. So as I stated, right, what we see most of the time is that people don't have irresistible offers, they have resistible offers. So let me just run you through some examples of some bad offers of some good offers and maybe get the creative juices flowing for you and how you can kind of craft up your godfather offer to really just go out there and crush it. So say, for instance, you know, it's somebody in the, in, in the mattress space, they're, they're a mattress company, and you know, a bad offer would be like, buy your mattress online, fast and free delivery. You know, th that's kind of like a standard offer that you see out there all the time. You know, it's just kind of very vanilla, it's not really going to get you really excited or get you calling your friends to tell you about it. And you know, it, it's not going to really do a lot for you, it's just, it is what it says, right? Then it, it, if you have a look as a contrast to that, you you know, which is, you know, an, a, an offer from a company called Koala Mattress, which is get Australia's best reviewed mattress delivered to your door in four hours for free for a 120 night trial. That is an irresistible offer. And, and that is an offer that my agency helped Koala Mattress go out to their marketplace and literally disrupt a multi-billion dollar mattress industry. And, and that's kind of a very clear example of you know, a great offer and a very vanilla lackluster offer. Or you know, it may be another one from, from a home building company. Now, you know, what does a bad offer look like for, for somebody that's a home builder? And this could apply to you if, you know, you're a marketing consultant and you're working in the home building niche. You know, you're going to need to know it, how to craft irresistible and godfather offers for your clients as well. So in this instance, you know, a home builder. Home Builders Melbourne, explore our latest designs, designing luxury homes from a range of elegant designs, inquire now. That is what you see 99.99% .99 of the time. That's pretty much how most people think that that's an offer. And that's not really an offer. There's not really any resemblance to a killer offer there. You know, and then if you compare that to a godfather offer, you know, we'll build your new home in just 30 weeks or give you $5,000 in cash. And that was an offer that we deployed for one of our clients. And after doing the halo strategy in their market, we really uncovered that the number one hair on fire problem that that market had in dealing with smaller and boutique builders 
is that you'd pay your deposit and then the timelines on the build would just blow out and people you know had real big pain around that about like you know them having a mortgage on the house or the land that they'd bought and then still renting and then needing to pay double while they were waiting to get their house built and that was a really big pain point so what we did is we went and created an offer for that client that specifically addressed that and then compensated them by giving them five thousand dollars in cash if we weren't able to deliver on that and how did that offer go well i'll tell you how that offer went that took you know a builder that had you know basically never gone out there and didn't have an established building company that where they were building lots of houses and it took them from zero to seven million dollars in just eight months and that is the power of what the godfather offer can do for your business Another example that I want to use is that, say for instance, you know, when we entered into the SEO space with our agency and we were offering SEO services and we kind of had to look out what is everyone kind of doing in this marketplace and how are they packaging up their offers and what's going on, you know, and we really found out very quickly that most people didn't have great offers and this was the typical kind of offer in the SEO space. Best SEO management, digital marketing experts, get top Google rank. All these kind of vanilla wishy-washy stuff. And then what we did is we came out with, you know, just a ridiculous offer. And that was, you know, guaranteed Google rankings in 90 days or we work for free. Right? That is an irresistible offer. Like someone that wants to get up onto page one of Google and we're actually saying that we're gonna guarantee that or we work for free. Like that is what you call a godfather offer. And that, you know, that one offer has really helped me build my agency from my bedroom into the multi-million dollar powerhouse that it is today. So what you really wanna do is you wanna think about how can you apply something like this to your consultancy business? Like, what is an offer that you could really deploy in your market? marketplace that would have people just worked up into a frenzy wondering how that you do that and how you can possibly deliver so much value. So what is not an irresistible offer, right? An irresistible offer is not great customer service. It's not outstanding quality. It's not being innovative or having a great team or being responsive to your customers' needs or even having a great reputation, right? So they're all great things to have, but they're not a compelling and irresistible offer of why somebody should hire you right now. Like They're claims that everybody make, right? And so you can't just rest your hat on those and think like that's going to be enough to get people worked up into a frenzy and want to buy what you is that you're selling now what you don't want to have in your offer is you know a convincing argument you know a compelling offer is infinitely more powerful than a convincing argument and you want it to be you know to pull people into the jet streams and for it to be so compelling that it just sucks them in to what you're doing and you know obviously one of the ways to do that is you know to kind of pour salt in the wound and kick their bruised knee and that's something that we've spoken about in this is about really thinking about agitating that problem that you know that they're experiencing and, and, and really like you know pouring salt in the wound getting them disrupted so they're motivated to take action on what the next steps are. And then to back that up, you really want to lead in now with a powerful guarantee. And at this stage, you might be saying, like, I don't want to have a guarantee. Like, you know, I don't want to offer a money back guarantee or a service satisfaction guarantee. And, you know, let me ask yourself, like, if you can't back your own self as a consultant, how can you expect other people to back you, right? Now, most people don't realize, but they've already got a guarantee baked into their service offering. Because, you know, if you ask them, what would you do if someone was unhappy? or if you didn't achieve the end outcome that, that you kind of were promising, what would you do then? And typically it's like, I would make it right. I'd keep working, I'd tweak things, I'd do this and I'd do that. So you already have a guarantee, you're just not advertising it. So what you really need to do is you need to kind of turn the tables around and apply that to an offer and actually market that and use that guarantee and lead with your best foot forward and remove any friction that is in the way between you and making a sale. Now, having a godfather offer is also the absolute best way 
to convert the highest percentage of the leads that you're generating into actual paying clients, right? So if you're meeting people with an offer that is so good that they can't refuse, it's only natural that a large percentage of those leads are actually gonna convert and turn into paying clients rather than just doing all this work, generating all these leads, and then just meeting them with a lackluster vanilla offer that is not really gonna get their attention and get them motivated to take the next step. So to reiterate, you really want to make it as irresistible as possible so when you present it to your prospects, it's a no-brainer for them to move forward and it's the logical next step in this journey. So let's sum it all up. What you want to do is go ahead right now and you want to create that feature sheet. You want to create a benefit list and you want to really synthesize that offer into writing and reduce it down to writing in the most compelling way possible and then you want to basically back that up with a powerful guarantee. Now the action item for this video is I want you to pull out your workbook and I want you to start to brainstorm a few different ideas that you've got for the Godfather offer in your marketplace. Once you've reduced them down to writing, I want you to dial up the volume and make them as irresistible as possible and then go out them and deploy them in your marketplace and we'll see you in the next video. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the magic lantern technique, which is the most powerful strategy that I've ever uncovered on how to take cold traffic and disinterested wanderers and turn them into dream clients. Now the magic lantern techniques really kind of refers to having a magic lantern and kind of guiding someone and taking them down the path to their desired end outcome or the desired end state that they're looking to achieve and really kind of providing value in advance. So at this stage, you know, we've basically created your high value content offer and we've got people in a sea of other people kind of raising their hand and saying, yeah, I'm interested in what it is that you are selling. And then really where the magic lantern technique comes in is really just providing further value to those people to get them to book in an appointment with you right? We've never been living in a day and age where skepticism online is so rampant. And if you think about the traditional thing of how people kind of market themselves online and how consultants kind of do digital marketing, it's generally to have some kind of piece of content that they give away. And then once the person downloads it, they just kind of thrash them to death with just the hard sell buy messages, right? And then it leaves people like, oh, I wish I never gave my email to that person. Like that wasn't an enjoyable experience. And what we want to do is really set ourselves apart from that and just be radically different to what everybody else is out there doing in the marketplace. So at this stage, you know, we've kind of thought about who is that dream buyer and what do they look like and what are their characteristics. And we've done that by using the halo strategy and really kind of digging into their pains and fears and hopes and dreams and then creating that high value content offer that specifically targets our dream buyer. And we've kind of now what we want to do is really think about where are they at? Like, let's put ourselves into their shoes and think about where it is that they want to go to for you, right? What does your dream buyer's kind of end desired state look like? So, for this example, I'm going to be using a PR consultant just to illustrate, you know, how we go through that process and implement the magic lantern technique for their kind of business. So we're gonna be thinking about where this person is, right? Where are they at in their journey? So we're, we've got someone here, which will typically be a business owner or, or, or something of that description. And basically they're not receiving any press, right? No one knows about them, they're unknown. Um, you know, they don't have any kind of little logos to add to their website or any credibility touch points because they haven't been mentioned in the press. And where is it that these guys wanna go? What does that end desired state looks like? Well, it would look like something where they're getting lots of press, right? And they're really happy because they're in all the blogs, they're being interviewed on podcasts, they're on Forbes and entrepreneur.com and all these different things and there's a lot going on, there's a lot of buzz happening 
for them around their brand. They're getting all this, you know, everyone knows about them. They've got all these logos on their website and that's essentially where they want to go. And the high value content offer is basically allowed us to target those people that specifically want to get press. So at this stage, what we've really done is kind of identified where they are and ultimately where they want to be going. And so the next step is to really kind of mark down and think, you know, if this is where they are and this is where they want to go, what are the required steps that they're going to need to take in order to get to that end goal? Because it's never in one leap, right? It's always this, uh, kind of a series of steps that someone would need to take. So for in this instance, you know, let's just map out, for instance, four different places that it's going to require them to do um, in order to, for them to reach down here at their desired outcome. So we've got them to kind of raise their hand. They're, they're in this kind of less desirable before state right now. They're sad as you can see from my perfect picture here. So what we're going to do is provide them some value in advance that's really going to take them one step closer to where it is that they want to go. So at this stage we might want to create a piece of content around you know a 12 step social media audit. And really that can be in the form of like, you know, a checklist or it could be like a PDF or a swipe file or whatever it might, you might want to do. Typically I find that video content is a really powerful way to do it and you don't need to get all crazy and fancy with the video content. Like you can just shoot it with your iPhone or your smartphone. That quality is more than good enough. So in this instance, we might just create like a checklist and that we're basically giving them to do like an audit on their social media presence and making sure that, you know, from a social media presence standpoint that their affairs are in order and if like a business or a journalist or an influencer was to check them out and do a little bit of digging around that everything looks just the way that it should and they're a credible business and they would deserve to kind of get some press. So we're going to provide that to them. What it's going to allow them to do is really go ahead and implement that and then start to kind of see some of those results or feel good about themselves that they're kind of moving towards where they want to be. So we're going to be taking this guy from where he is right now and we've moved him one step closer to where it is that he wants to go and throughout that process you know as a thing that I've kind of flagged a few times is that skepticism right now online is rampant it's the highest it's ever been and that's really because kind of the low barriers to entry for consultants or for businesses to really get out there and start marketing themselves okay so they, even when they've downloaded their high value content offer for you they're still going to have a high level of skepticism at this point it would have lowered a little bit because you've provided them some value but essentially it's still high so what we're trying to do throughout this process is lower that skepticism and then we're also trying to increase you know our status as an authority in the space and our trust with them so they trust what we're saying and also simultaneously increase the desire for hiring you as a consultant so really what it looks like here is when we start this process you know, we'll use red here, skepticism is high. And as we provide each step of value along the way, what it's doing is it's lowering throughout that process. And at the same time that that's really lowering, we're also increasing our trust and our desire to, for basically our services, for us as a consultant, okay? Now, so what you've really done is you've moved this person one step closer. They would have done this audit and be like, oh, this is awesome, like this is really cool. What's next? What do I do next, okay? And this content, to be really clear, is what you'd be drip feeding out in an email sequence after somebody downloads the high value content offer. So if you're wondering, okay, where, how am I gonna deliver this or how is it gonna work? You know, it's as simple in an email sequence, it's very simple, and then it are just gonna be drip feeding that out and providing that value in advance. So at this stage, then we're gonna be basically looking at, okay, what does that next step look like? And how do we really get them one step closer to, to kind of start getting press and start pitching and at this stage you know we might want to put together a video on you know 11 things never to say to a social influencer right they're going to be reaching out to influencers and start trying to get you know featured in blogs and things like that we want to give them a piece of video content that says you know the 11 things that you should never say to an influencer so we'll put that up on here
So what we've done is we've kind of mapped out the 11 things never to say to an influencer. And that will be a video content that says like, look, you know, influencers are constantly getting pitched by startups and businesses, you know, to try to get them featured, you know, in the, in, in the blogs and all that kind of stuff. And they're just getting hammered all the times. And this is the things that they hate. This is how they hate to be spoken to. This is how everybody approaches them. And these are the things that you never want to say to them. So we're not saying at this stage, this is what you do want to say. We're just saying this is what you don't want to say and really kind of just providing that value, letting them know how this system works and really giving them some stuff that they probably would have never ever thought about and making them more informed and moving them further down that line, right? So then again, what we've done is we've moved them one step closer to their desired outcome. And as we've done that again, the skepticism is going down further, further down as we provide them more value. And the trust and desire is going up and up and up. So this is really radically different, right? You think about this person going through this process. They've downloaded your high value content offer. You've hit them with a cool piece of information. They've kind of done that audit for their social media channels. Then you've given them another video that's really kind of telling you them the things not to say to an influencer. And they're like, wow, like this is just awesome. Like how is this person just providing me all this value? I know money's ever changed hands. Like they haven't asked me for anything in return. Like they're just literally providing providing just coolness and value to me without ever asking for anything. And the way that these videos are designed is to be 80% kind of value and content and then 10 to 20% kind of pitch at the end where you're saying, you know, if you're enjoying this content and you're enjoying this whole process, then what I've done is I've actually put some time aside on my calendar for you to schedule a call and then you insert your Godfather offer. So if you're a PR consultant, your Godfather offer might be like a 12 month, you know, campaign blueprint of like a press campaign of what you're going to be putting together and what that you know press media kit looks like over the next 12 months and that calendar and how you're going to be reaching out to people so it's just like a soft kind of thing at the end saying if you're enjoying this i put this aside and really offering them that godfather strategy and really by doing that you're going to get people starting to kind of book in book in on your calendar and these are the hottest leads that you will ever get right because all you've done is provided value to them and you've already proven that you're unlike everybody else by doing that and their skepticism is going down and down and down and they're going to really reach out to you and book in a time on your calendar when they're ready willing and able to do business with you right it's not like what most people do how someone downloads a piece of content and then they're just calling them asking them to buy straight away right like just walking into bars and just asking people to marry them straight straight up cold. This is completely and radically different from that. So at this stage, you know, we've provided them with two kind of value pieces of content. They're moving down towards their outcome. Every time that you do this and you kind of let them sit there for a day or two, they're kind of like a starving crowd, really hungry for that next piece of content that you're going to kind of drip out to them. And you always want to be kind of hinting at the bottom of those emails that there's something else coming, right? Like, you know, if you thought this was great, wait till what I've got to show you in the next two to three days. And what that does is it really kind of makes them really hungry and like eager to open up all your emails. Usually when you get an email from someone that's marketing related, it's like straight archive right or you delete that email just straight away but you know what you do by going through this process is have people like eager and can't wait to receive your emails and that's a very very powerful thing so then at this stage what we want to do is we want to think okay what is the next step that we would need to provide that person to again move them one step closer for where they want to go so we've already told them the things like the 11 things not to say to an influencer so you know a great step at this stage might be you know know like an outreach template to influencers so you kind of get them and you can kind of you know dress that up and make it really sexy like you know our five-step system for getting featured on TechCrunch, Entrepreneur and Forbes and and give them kind of like a you know an outreach template that they can reach out to influencers and start to kind of get features on blogs so we'll put that here which is our outreach template And then again, what we've done through that process is again, we've moved this guy one step closer. And as we've done that, we've lowered the skepticism. It's going down and down and down and down. 
and simultaneously we've in, we're increasing the trust and desire, right? So at this stage, what is happening is that, you know, you really kind of just keep on moving them towards that desired end state and you're giving them that value, they're implementing it, they're seeing results. And now you might be thinking like, wow, Sabri, like I'm not just gonna give out all my services for free and that's not what I'm asking you to do, right? What we're simply doing is that, yes, there will be a percentage of people that go through this process, and will probably get great results and might want to just do it themselves and you know all power to them and you'll be providing them with a whole bunch of value but that's going to happen in any case right so like you know in marketing and in digital marketing we're only ever you know counting on a very small subset of the market or a very small percentage of people taking the desired action that we want them to whether it's like clicking on an ad or coming through to a landing page and booking an appointment or whether it's the appointments booking in and actually becoming a paying client. It's always going to be a small percentage of people that are actually going to do that thing that we want them to do. But instead of like if all the people that don't do what we want to do, typically everyone else is just like hammering these guys right, with just cold hard sales messages. They're not building any value in their marketplace. And by going through this process, that not only increases the total percentage of people taking the desired outcome that you want them to, it increases that dramatically because you're going through this whole process, but all the people that don't buy, you know, they're gonna stay on your list, they're not gonna unsubscribe, and you've created a lot of kind of equity and brand equity and trust and value and goodwill with that marketplace, which is just so different to how everybody else is doing it. And when you do that, they might not be ready to buy right now, but when they are ready, who do you think they're gonna to go to? And in a addition, the guys that you really want, they're not going to have the time to do all this, right? Even if you're giving them all the tools, like they're not going to have six hours a day to kind of work on the PR for their business. So we're just really proving to them at this stage that we can really help them by giving them those results and giving them that value in advance. So the next point is what we really want to do is just provide, you know, one more piece of kind of valuable content to get them closer to what that desired end outcome is for them. So at this stage, just kind of have a look where we are, right? They've raised their hand with our high value content offer, then they've kind of downloaded their 12 step social media audit from there. Then we've kind of hit them with a video of the 11 things never to say to an influencer. They've kind of gone through that, consumed that content. Then after we've told them not what to say we've actually given them you know a blogger outreach template that they can just basically start reaching out to influencers at Forbes and TechCrunch or wherever it is that they want to get featured and at this stage they would have done that gotten a little bit of results and thought like this is just incredible this is so cool like I'm just doing this I'm getting all this value their strategies of what they say works I believe this person the skepticism is going low and then what we want to do is offer them one more piece so it kind of all feeds into the big picture you don't want to be talking about you know an outreach template before they've got these other affairs in order so it's kind of like the gradual progression right in order to get them to that desired end outcome you don't want to lead with the biggest thing that's closest to their desired outcome at the very beginning because that just doesn't make sense in a chronological order so then the next thing after they've done that we want to feed in them getting this outreach and getting press and starting to get mentions and really helping them just blow it up and what we want to do by that is giving them a press release template. PR template. And what that allows them to do is really go out there and kind of craft, you know, a press release template to kind of go out and really blow things up and feed in any of those credibility points from those blogs that have been mentioned in, which is going to increase their likelihood of this kind of press release really catching into wildfire online. And then so basically, again, we've moved them, as you guessed it, one step closer. Right, and they're, they're really, really close to like being like here, right, and, and kind of getting that desired outcome that they really, really want. And as we go through that process, throughout going through this whole exercise, their skepticism is pretty much through the floor right now as we go through this process and their trust in our strategies and us as a consultant has increased and so with it has the desire. 
And the whole goal of really going through this is to basically not only create a lot of goodwill and trust, but to also get booked in strategy session and consults with people, right? That's the end goal as a consultant is we know in order to get paying clients, we're going to have to jump onto the telephone and speak to people. And what we want to do is make sure that those people, you know, their skepticism is low as it can possibly be. Their trust and desire to work with us is as high as it can possibly be. So we don't need to jump on calls and whip out all these high pressure sales tactics and, and be really uncool and like salesy and sleazy and do what everybody else is doing where it's not a pleasurable exercise to speak to you, right? We just want to, if we do all this, we've done a lot of the grunt work and a lot of the heavy lifting. So when you jump on that call with that person, you don't need to be like this super flamboyant killer sales person with all these closing techniques because you've already answered like the biggest question on that person's mind is, can I trust this person? You know, does the stuff that they do work? Will it work for my individual business? And you've already kind of crossed those hurdles because you've actually proven that it does by providing them that value and those results in advance. So what you've really done is picked up your magic lantern and then taken them down the path. And at the end of that path is that desired outcome that they're looking for. And you've really illuminated the way across throughout that process and really proved to them that you can help them. And this is the most powerful strategy ever for really creating the hottest, most piping hot strategy session and consults that you could ever imagine. So you can jump on those calls and there's already kind of a relationship. They feel like they've known you because they've watched these videos. You don't need to get crazy with a video production or anything like that. And they feel like they've got this connection with you and all the resistance that typically is in place on a call like this is pretty much removed. And they kind of, you've answered a lot of those questions. So the action item for this video is, I want you to pull out your workbook and start to think about, you know, what are some of those steps for your magic lantern technique? Where is your kind of ideal buyer right now and where do they want to go? And then what are the three or four steps that they must take in order to get there and start to kind of map out content ideas and think about what that looks like for your business. So go ahead and do that now and I'll see you in the next video. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the Stallion Lead Generation Funnel. So all the funnel is, is basically a controlled communication path that we take kind of disinterested wanderers and kind of cold traffic that don't know, like, and trust us. And then the process that it takes to get them and then deliver them to a point where they are a paying client. And there's certain steps along the way in the funnel that I'm going to be really kind of talking to today and showing you this whole process from beginning to end and how you can really use paid traffic to really kind of accelerate this whole process of generating appointments and generating paying clients. Okay, so where we begin is looking at kind of what are the different paid traffic channels available. Now in paid traffic, there's really two grown-ups in the room and that is Google and Facebook. So we're going to kind of be looking at using them as pay-per-click channels, hence why we call them paid traffic channels, and really kind of buying traffic off those channels, whether it's you know, YouTube, Instagram, Google, Facebook, they're all owned by those two companies. They're just kind of different platforms. And typically right now, as a kind of like a worldwide stat, you know, a cost per click in this space is around a dollar to two dollars, meaning that you know we're putting ads in front of people and getting them to click on them, and on average it's costing us about one to two dollars, right? Because we need basically a channel to funnel people into our funnel from. So we're going to be getting those people from these mediums and then essentially throwing them into our funnel. So as we've kind of you know we're going to be funneling this traffic through to an opt-in page. Now an opt-in page is just a page you know like a web page where you're you're providing your high value content offer and you're collecting their name and email address and what other details that you want in order for that person to raise their hand, download that and then enter into your funnel. So that's really the entry point of the funnel. Hence why the word opt-in is that they're opting in for that content and then they're going through your funnel. And typically, you know, with kind of an opt-in page, a, a normal kind of conversion rate that we've found is around that 20% plus, meaning 20% of the people that we kind of funnel off these paid traffic channels and bring them through to our opt-in page will actually raise their hand and convert and go into the funnel. 
Meaning that these are kind of costing us, you know, five to ten dollars or odd to kind of get one of these leads onto our database. Then from there, basically what we will be doing is the thank you page after they've downloaded your high value content offer. So they've put their details in, click submit to get it sent to them, and then they arrive on a thank you page. And the thank you page is really the landing page that we're going to be creating together for you in this course. And basically, they're going to arrive on that page, and at the top of that page kind of we're suggesting to use what's called a video sales letter. Now a video sales letter is just a short five to ten minute video that really kind of just demonstrates and provides some value to them and then has a pitch and invites them to jump on a consult with you. And you can create them like on a keynote or a PowerPoint. It's just a very basic presentation. You can do it with no more than just your computer mic to get started. And really what that's allowing us to do is to capture these people, getting them to opt in for our content, arriving them on our landing page, and then hitting them with the video sales letter and really pitching them and inviting them to come on this call to kind of solve their problem. And we wanna have you know the call to action on that video as really being our godfather offer and getting them to jump on the call. So then they've arrived on our landing page, they've watched that video sales letter, and then there's still gonna be a bunch of people that don't take us up on our offer. At every stage in this funnel, we're only ever kind of relying on a very small subset of the market and of that traffic actually taking the desired action that we want them to. What we're gonna do for these people that don't click on that call to action and don't book in a call with us, this is where the magic lantern technique comes into place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit these guys with a bunch of value in advance, build that goodwill through a series of emails, and at the, at the end of every email, we're gonna invite them to book in that call with us. So we're gonna have all these emails go down, and then ultimately each of these emails are funneling people through to our book a call page. And now in terms of booking in a call, right? What is the process? What are the steps that they're gonna do? Are they just giving us their name and phone number? Or what information are we gonna be getting for them, right? We, we essentially want them to, to qualify themselves and to essentially jump through hoops in order to kind of claim that godfather offer. We wanna make sure that we're speaking with people that are really qualified and that we're kind of confident that we can help. So what we wanna do at that stage is we wanna have like a survey page that asks them a series of questions, right? It asks them about their pain point. It asks them, you know, what is the biggest problem that they're experiencing? What their budget is? And, and when are they kind of looking to make a decision on something like this? And then after we've collected all that information and we're gonna be listing, you know, a few of the tools that you can use that you don't need to get all wrapped up in the technology. It's very, very simple to set up and we'll show you exactly how to do that. And we'll provide links in the resource section of how to do that. So once you've got that survey page, then what we're going to be doing after they've gone through and they've filled out the information, then they're going to be arriving on a calendar page, which we're going to set up through Calendly. Again, it's a two-step system. You just set it up and kind of away you go. And what we've found is that the percentage of people that will kind of come through to this video sales letter and arrive on that landing page and watch that and then actually take the next action is around kind of 8%. It varies, you know, anywhere between kind of 8 and 20% or whatnot. So, but as a safeguard, we'll just put 8 there, right? So then the people have come through, they've watched this, they've clicked on the survey page, and then next they've gone through to the calendar page on Calendly to specifically pick in a time on your calendar that you have decided that is available and that also suits them to actually jump on that strategy session and on that consult with you. Now, if we're looking at it from like a paid traffic perspective and looking, okay, it's costing us one to $2 to get a click, then it's costing us five to $10 to get an opt-in and get a lead, and we've got like an 8% conversion rate, give or take. You know, we're finding that on average, it's taking kind of anywhere, it's costing anywhere between 30 and $200 to kind of generate one of those applications for a strategy session with you, okay? So from that stage, then you're gonna basically jump on a call with a prospect. 
So let's just kind of go through what that process looks like. We've got an ad that we're putting out in front of people on Google or Facebook or any of these mediums. They're clicking on that ad, they're going through to our high value content offer, then they're opting in for that. And then there's gonna be a percentage of people straight off the bat that go, wow, this is awesome, let me book in for a call. They'll click on the survey page, they'll fill out the survey, they'll go to the calendar page, they'll book in a time that works with them. Then there'll be a percentage of people that may not be ready straight off the bat, they're gonna get hit with the whole magic lantern technique and the emails, it's gonna drip feed that value and that content to them and they're gonna go through the same process, it's gonna push them and kind of direct them towards booking in a call, going through to the survey page, booking in on your calendar for a time that specifically works for them to speak with you. And then we're gonna be jumping on the call and because they've gone through this whole process and you've provided this value with them, that's when you're gonna really kind of jump on the call, do that needs analysis, find out like what are their problems and find out whether or not they're gonna be a good fit. And we've found that on average for those calls, you know, a typical conversion rate is around 20%. So even after they've gone through all this coolness and all this value and everything that's taking place here, we're still gonna get about 20% plus, sometimes it can be higher, on average it's 20%. And then we're gonna get a 20% close rate on those calls, giving us you know, a CPA which stands for cost per acquisition. What is it costing us to acquire a client using paid traffic? And typically we're finding that it's kind of between 200 and a thousand dollars. And you might thinking, oh wow, that, 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 that's, a, that's quite a lot of money. However, if you think about you know, what the average client is worth to your consultancy business, you might be charging a thousand dollar retainer or a two thousand or a five thousand dollar retainer. You might have a thousand dollar setup fee or a two thousand dollar setup fee. And it's very easy to liquidate that cost of being able to have the ability to go out there and buy customers at a profit, right? Think about the power and the control and the certainty that this gives you, that you know that you can basically, you know, put a dollar into the machine and $3 or $5 will get spit out. You can actually go out there, put in ads and be generating these super high quality appointments and strategy calls for you to kind of jump on and help people. And it's like, you know, I put X amount of dollars in then I'm gonna get so many consults and so many strategy sessions on my calendar. And it really gives you the freedom to just pull down on the lever as much as as many consults as you wanna be doing and as many clients as you wanna be doing and really puts you in the driver's seat of your business. So you're not reliant on referrals or any word of mouth or any of these things that you're not in control of. You're completely in control of this process and you know tweak it throughout the process to make it even work more efficiently. And at the end of the day, it just delivers you clients on tap. So there you have it, that's the Stallion lead generation funnel. And the reason that it's called the Stallion funnel is because you really wanna starve the ponies to feed the stallions. And what we've gone through this whole motion here is, is kind of only being reliant on a small subset of that market, i.e. the stallions, as being a good fit for booking in those consults and becoming clients with us. So at this stage, you might be looking at this whole process and thinking, look, this all sounds great, but you know, you've tried running ads on these mediums and it hasn't worked for you. And the chances are probably because you have been running ads and haven't generally run them through like a system like this that you know spits out qualified appointments and takes somebody through like a controlled communication path and really kind of really makes that traffic work as hard as possible and kind of squeezes every last drip of juice out of that orange and ROI. And truthfully, maybe a lot of the things that you've tried in your paid traffic, you know, you haven't had the right guidance or the right strategies, but I'm gonna unpack that all for you. But I'm gonna show you exactly what to put in those ads to have people clicking on them like crazy and for you to only be targeting like your dream buyers and people that are already qualified to kind of be a great fit for you and for your business. So there you have it. That's the Stallion Lead Generation Funnel and as the action item for this video, I want you to go away and basically download this blueprint in the resource section and start to think about what those numbers look like for your business. Think about how many clients do you need to get in order to fund that kind of lifestyle and that goal that we discussed. So just kind of go through that exercise, start to think about you know, what's gonna be a good fit for where you are and where you want to go. And you can do that right now and then I'll see you in the next video.
So in this video, we're gonna be talking about closing the sale. From nurtured lead all the way through to paying client and what this process looks like. So at this stage, let's just kind of rewind and think about where we're sitting and how much we've covered. So we've kind of gone out there into the marketplace, we've had our high value content offer, we've had people downloading that, entering into the top of our funnel, and we've used the magic lantern technique to actually demonstrate that we can help them by actually helping them and taking them through that process. Okay, so they've been nurtured, they've had you know a series of emails and video content go out and forms of magic lantern technique and we've really kind of shown this person that we are the authority in this space and then we've hit them with our godfather offer and basically made them an offer they simply can't refuse to jump on the telephone with us and for them to really reach out to us and book in on our calendar at a time that is convenient for us and and they're kind of reaching out asking for help so this is where we're actually gonna get on the telephone but because we've gone through this whole process Process, and this whole kind of song and dance process throughout this magic lantern technique and the nurturing of these leads, it has really fundamentally changed the psychology of the sale. In, in as such, we're not just going in and speaking to a stranger. At this stage, this person will feel like they know you. They will feel like that you understand the problem that they are experiencing even better than they do. And not only that, but you actually have the solution to get them to where they want to go. And here you are now on the telephone. And really what takes place here is you really want to just jump on the telephone with that prospect and start to do a needs analysis, right? You want to, as I say, sell like a doctor. So you don't want to go in there feeling like, oh no, what am I going to say? What's going to, you know, what am I going to do? What's that magic closing technique that I'm going to use on them that's just going to make them say yes and buy right now? We don't need to pull any rabbits out of our hat at this stage, okay? All we're simply doing is jumping on the call. They've requested that we give them a call and speak to them. They've booked in a time on our calendar. And then we're just going to start off by saying, okay, sure, well, look, tell me a little bit about where you're at with this problem, what you're currently doing. And you're basically doing a diagnosis, right? And you're not going to prescribe anything to this person, like in the medical industry, before you've done a proper diagnosis, okay? So the way that you want to do that is, you know, you might be, as to use the example of the, the health consultant or wellness coach again, you might jump on that call and you say, okay, no problems. Well, could you tell me a little bit more about what you're currently doing to improve your energy. Run me through what are the problems you're experiencing. And then they're gonna be telling you, you know, all of those problems. And then you might just be asking and probing for further questions. Okay, sure, well, what are you eating? What does your exercise regime look like? You know, what time are you going to bed at night? And you're further just trying to identify, you know, what it is, what problem that they're experiencing. And what I see like most people do and most consultants do is that they get into this environment and they're basically like, you know, squeezing all different areas of the body saying, oh, does this hurt? Does this hurt? Does this hurt? Does this hurt? Rather than just saying, hey, like, where are you experiencing pain right now? And that's all we're trying to do on this call is finding out like what is that pain point and really what is that kind of like bruised knee or that wound that we can kind of help them and address. So you're just going to want to get on there and probe them and, and do a good thorough needs analysis and find out where they're at. Then once you've found out where they're at and all the problems and then you want to start getting to, okay, well, what have you done so far to address this problem? And then you want to hear about like how they're kind of tackling about fixing this problem and what are some of the efforts that they're already making to do that. And at this stage, you don't want to have ever mentioned your product or what you do or what you sell and how much you charge. Like most salespeople and most consultants, they're basically looking for any opportunity just to freaking open up their pitch and start pitching this person full blown. You want to take a completely different approach. You wanna be leaned back in your chair, you wanna be resting and just gathering all the facts. And before you like jump on that call and go, yeah, I just wanna jump on the phone and sell this person, you need to find out whether or not they're gonna be a great fit for your program in any case. And the way that you do that is by asking questions. So once you've gone through that process and then you've answered all, you know, you've kind of asked them all the questions, they've answered all those questions, and you're confident at this stage that they're a good fit, then you can proceed to tell them about how you can help them.
them. Now, it's a very important distinction that I want to make is that you will not be a good fit for everybody that you speak to. As much filtering, sorting and siphoning that we want to be doing you know, with our funnel, we're still going to be speaking to some people that might not be a great fit for the program. And if you get to this stage in the call and you realize that they're not a good fit, you need to shoot them straight and just to be honest and just say, look, I don't think I'm going to be the best person to help you get to where you want to go. And, you know, having the, the, the ability to do that is an incredibly powerful thing and it's an empowering thing. And, you know, the only way that you can be confident to do that is to know that you're going to have a, you know, a full calendar book with people that are reaching out and wanting to speak to you and there will be people that will be a great fit. So if that person isn't a great fit, just tell them. Just say, hey, look, based on everything that you've told me today, I don't think my program's going to be the best thing for you to reach that desired outcome. So, you know, I don't want to waste your time or mine. Um, you know, I'm not going to be a great fit, but, you know, I wish I could help you, but it's just, it's not going to be, you know, a fair thing. And I'm not going to do you justice by going ahead with this. So, you know, I really wish you all the best, um, but it's just not going to be a great fit for us. And then simply end the call, right? Now, if they are a great fit, this is really when you want to transition and start to tell them you want to say, hey, like, hey, John, you know, it looks like you would be a great fit for my program. And then you tell them why they'd be a great fit. And you'd go on to basically say, like, this is what it would look like if you guys were to work together. And at this stage, you'll already know what those pain points are, right? They've already told you, like, they're really low on energy. They just need to get that zest back for life. Or they don't have the vitality that they used to. And they really want to get that back. And then you would lead on to say, well, it sounds like you'd be a perfect fit for our program. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but from what you've told me today is that, you know, what you're feeling like is you're you really run down and you don't quite have that same passion that you used to for your life or the same amount of energy and drive and you really want to kind of feel young again and have that energy back and you know then you'd go on to basically spend the next 60 seconds or so to describe you know what it is that your service provides you know and then you would say look I feel that my service would be perfect for you because essentially what we do is you know we've got this audit process where we'll go through and we'll do a checklist of everything that you're doing in your life right now and where we feel that you're you're losing energy and then we'll write you a proven roadmap of the six steps that you're going to need to do in order to really revitalize yourself again and we do that through four ways you know one way will be through your nutrition and then through exercise and through sleep and really just like briefly outline you know how you can help them with that big problem that you've just done the proper diagnosis for and then at that stage, once you've kind of detailed the benefits of the services that you offer, you then want to open them up and invite them to take the next step with you. And after speaking with them, you can kind of get, you know, find out how receptive that they are to the information that you're covering and where you feel that they'll sit. And this will come to basically the point where you need to kind of discuss pricing and reveal your pricing, right? And at this stage, what you really want to do is kind of transition and you want to have a few different options that people can basically sign up with you. And I suggest having like two to three options and packages that you offer that would be a good fit for that prospect. And what you want to do is detail the benefits of those three different packages and then prescribe one of them to them. And the way that I found works best to do this is, you know, you're going to have like a low tier package, a middle tier and a high tier package. And you kind of want to lead with the high tier package and you want to see what their response is to that and kind of what they feel about that price point. And ultimately, you want to be pitching the middle package of your program. And you would say like, you look, people engage with us with one in one of three ways you know it's either this plan this plan or this plan but based on everything that you've told me today I really feel like the best fit for you right now in order for you to achieve X outcome that you're looking for would be to go for the middle package and the thing is with the middle package you want to have the price of that just a little bit more expensive you know than than the low tier package and the low tier package is the one that you kind of are in business to sell and it's the one that you expect them to take. So if you get the medium or the higher package, it's simply a bonus. But you can always fall back on the lower tier package. And you'd essentially run them through those different options and then you would prescribe one and say, look, based on everything that you've told me, I really feel like this middle package would be the best, best solution. Now, usually that's like $2,000 a month and then it's also $2,000 per 
as a setup fee to get started on the program and for me to write it all for you. However, I found that the best type of clients that I get the best results for are the ones that have the ability to move quickly and be very decisive. So if you can kind of decide with me today that this is the program that you feel is going to be the best fit for you, I'd be more than happy to waive that setup fee and get you up and running and get you those results that you're after. Now at that stage, you know, they may come back to you and they might say, oh, you know, that's just a bit too expensive for where, for where I'm sitting right now. Like I don't have $2,000 per month. And then you can fall back on the lighter plan and you can say, look, I completely appreciate that you may not have the money for that right now. Is there any other reason that you wouldn't want to move forward with this other than the money? If I could make the money make sense, could we get this handled for you? And at that stage, that's kind of a test to see like, you know, is there, is there anything else that's kind of holding that person back from making a decision and if they say no it's just the money then you would lean back and say cool well I understand that how about we do this how about we get you started on the light package which is just $1,200 per month and let's get some wins on the board get you some forward momentum and then you know further down the line we can perhaps look at getting you up onto that medium package but this is going to be a great starting point and also to help you out with the finances I'm happy to honor that way of the setup fee being the $2,000 if we can go ahead and get you set up today. Okay, so that's really powerful. The reason that we want to have options is it's basically when you start to present options to the prospects, it's like, you know, which one do you want? It's one or the other, right? Where if you don't have any options and you just have one program and you say, look, our program's $2,000 a month and there's a $2,000 setup fee. Um, then that prospect is making the decision to whether or not they want to go ahead or not. What you want to do is you want to move that focus onto which package do I want to sign up to, not do I want to sign up. And when you have those three different options, it allows you to do that. And I highly suggest never pitching the lowest package straight out the gate. And unless you really think that they are a super qualified buyer and they have the means, don't pitch the highest package. Go straight down the middle for the medium package because you can always upsell and downsell from there. Now, at this stage, you might be saying like, look, I'm not a salesperson. You know, I feel very uncomfortable about jumping on the phone and, and doing this whole sales thing. Now, you need to understand that this process is radically different from any other sales process, okay? Most of the time, people are out there and they're asking people to marry them on the first date, where we've gone about it in a completely different way, right? We've gone out there and demonstrated and provided value and built this a whole bunch of goodwill in the marketplace. So the people that we're jumping on the phone with, they're the hottest leads that you can ever get, right? They're fully pre-indoctrinated with all the content that we've been going through. We've demonstrated that we can help them and we're seen as a clear fit for them and they've reached out to us and booked in a time to speak to us. So I want you to remove all the pressure about, you know, you having to jump on and be like this high pressure salesperson or use these sleazy sales tactics. You're just jumping on there to do a diagnosis and to write a prescription and to help that person get to the desired outcome that they want to. And another thing that I really want to bring up is that you know, you might think, okay, I've gone through all this process and like I've provided this whole bunch of value and you might be feeling pretty good about that. Now you need to understand that you are not solving anybody's problem until a sale is made. Until you've engaged with the client and they have parted with some of their hard earned money and they've hired you as a consultant to fix their problem, no value has been exchanged at this time, right? And really it's your kind of ethical obligation to help that person in solving this problem, right? They have a real problem and you have the solution to that. And you know, you need to fully be sold on that the solution that you provide is worth 10 times what you're charging right? If you're a health consultant and you're charging $2,000 a month or $1,200 a month, you know, what is that worth to that person to get their health on track? You know, the life source of their life, like there's nothing, you can't put a price on your health, right? So you need to be completely sold around the solutions that you have and kind of jump on that call with no pressure, no obligation, but really having kind of like, you know, a service that you feel like it's your service to really help that person and to get them to where they want to 
to be. And so if you're kind of thinking that you're, you know, an introvert and you're not really loud mouth and you don't, you know, you're not kind of out there and really flamboyant and extravagant and loud and, you know, you're not the typical kind of salesperson, that's completely fine because the whole process that we've taken this prospect through has eliminated the need for that whole song and dance and having to kind of come in with this high pressure closing or anything like that because we've taken them through this whole process to arrive them at the point where the sale should really occur as frictionless as possible. We've kind of removed all that resistance along the way. And you know, it's just a simple question of like, this is all the stuff that you're, that you're going through. These are all the problems you're experiencing. Would you like some help with that? If so, I can help you and this is what it looks like, right? And you will obviously get a percentage and the largest percentage of people will probably, you know, at this stage, you know, not be able to go ahead. That's just the way that the world works, right? Whether it's sales or marketing, we're always counting on a small fraction of the people taking us up on the offer whether it's converting people on our landing pages or into our high value content offers or converting those consults into appointments, right? We're, we're only ever counting on a small percentage of people really taking us up on the offer. So we want that whole process to be an enjoyable one. And for at the end of that consult, for that person to be able to walk away better than when they jumped on that call. So you wanna be providing value on that call live in the flesh, regardless of whether or not they choose to buy. And what you'll find is the people that do buy, it will be a pretty frictionless process. You'll offer them those options and you'll have a paying client before you know. So to recap, so what you want to be doing on that call is jumping on there and really having, you know, the focus of doing an accurate diagnosis of the problems that that person is experiencing and not really having the attachment around just selling that person, but more so on really finding out what are the problems that they're experiencing. Then after you've gone through that process, you want to prescribe the solution of exactly what it is that you're selling as being the perfect fit, like a glove love for the problems that they're experiencing. Then you want to have the option close where you give them two to three options that they can choose to move forward with and then finish with an action oriented pricing schedule where you're basically motivating them to make a decision quickly and incentivizing them through pricing to do so. So the action item for this video is just start to think about, you know, how your consultation would work and, you know, how you can use some of this framework and write your own script that's completely tailored to your specific business. And then think about, you know, what are the things that you'd go through? What do your pricing packages look like? And then what kind of incentive in terms of pricing could you offer to motivate them to take action now? So go ahead and do that. Start to flesh that out and we'll see you in the next video. In this video, we're going to be talking about referrals and case studies. Now, at this stage, you're probably wondering, you know, when am I going to start talking about referrals, right? This is a consulting course. And, you know, a lot of consultants are out there and they base their whole business off getting referrals. So when am I going to kind of be opening up the kimono and showing you my hidden referral strategy? And the reality of it is that my stance on referrals is that it's not a predictable way to grow your business. You know, it's the icing on the cake and it isn't the cake itself. And what I see that is prevalent in the industry is that most people, you know, they're not advertising, they don't have a proven system like what we're talking about in this course, and they basically operate their business by kind of whatever referrals come in. They don't have, you know, a predictable system to get new clients and therefore they're kind of you know, calling up all their friends and contacts and asking for referrals. And if they don't get a referral that month, they don't get any new clients that month. And it's one of those things where for people that are completely reliant off referrals, you know, if you want to go out there and double your business this year and you're doing that solely off referrals, you can't predict how many referrals you're getting, right? It's not kind of a solid solution in order to scale your business. Now, I'm not saying that referrals aren't good. They're great. And, you know, I get a lot of referrals. And this system that I'm showing you will produce a lot of referrals for you. And the way that it happens is that, you know, you've got this system that is going to be delivering clients and appointments to you on demand. And as a result of that, what you want to do is really focus on becoming a master at your craft and at getting your clients the best 
results known to man and getting the best results possible. And you wanna have all your focus on your client's results. And as you do this, because you've got a steady stream of new clients that are just coming in like clockwork every month, you're gonna have a lot of clients that are really happy and they're getting outstanding results. And what do people do when they're really happy and they're getting outstanding results? They refer other people. So really, you will find that you this will probably get you more referrals than anything that you've ever done. However, there's not some simple framework on how you can increase the number of referrals you're getting. It's more so having the focus on just delivering the best results that you possibly can, and the referrals will come as a byproduct. And they will just be the cream on top, yeah? You won't be building your business purely from referrals. They will just be added bonuses and added benefits that you're getting as a result of doing incredible work in your space. Now moving on to testimonials and case studies, right? A lot of consultants when they're just starting out see this as a huge hurdle and a roadblock for them to be confident to go out into their marketplace and start landing clients and start making money. And I do not want this to be the case for you, okay? So having testimonials and having case studies, that is fantastic and it definitely increases the chances of you getting clients. However, every person that starts out in the beginning are in the same situation that you are in right now. They are in your shoes. You know, they didn't have a full kind of, you know, list of case studies and clients that they could bring out like show ponies and show everybody to make them want to buy, right? You have to start somewhere. And really where you want to start and what your focus really needs to be on in the beginning when you don't have this long list of testimonials and case studies to kind of, you know, as like feathers to put in your cap is you want to have your your focus on intimately understanding your market and their pains and fears, hopes and dreams better than anybody else. And being able to articulate that you understand your prospects problems better than they do themselves. And as you have a really strong focus on this, and if you can clearly articulate what those problems are better than any or anybody else in your space or any other consultants in your space, then naturally they're going to feel if this person person knows my problem so well and can articulate it so clearly, then they must be the best at basically providing a solution to this problem. And that's really where you want to focus on. Now, once you've gone through that process and you've got a whole bunch of clients and you start to get some incredible results for those clients, then you can tack on those case studies and those testimonials, which I'll show you how to do right now. Now, when you're in the stage that you're, you've got a whole bunch of clients, you know, they're really successful, you're getting some phenomenal results, now it's the time to start capturing those testimonials and ultimately those case studies. So the easiest place to start is obviously to get a written testimonial off them, right? It doesn't take any, any, any camera, you don't need to do any of that. So I would suggest that you start with like just capturing and getting like a basic written testimonial. Now, for the people that may be comfortable shooting a video for you, I would suggest that you just say, look, I don't mind if you just put together a basic video on your iPhone or on your smartphone, just illustrating what it's been like working together, you know, where you were before we started working together and where you are now. And just capturing those videos and then you can basically, I'll talk to you about how to leverage them. Then as you get a little bit further in your journey and you know, you've got a bit more money saved up in the bank and you've been working with some clients for an extended period of time and you've got a little bit of money to throw towards this in terms of production value, that's when I would suggest that you hire a video crew to basically go out and document them and use them as a case study. A case study is generally just a little bit more detailed than what a normal short like 20 or 30 second testimony would be. It really kind of further illustrates where that person was, where you took them, and you know how things are so much better in their life right now after working with you. My name's Beth Hurrigan and I own a financial planning practice and we specialise uh, in giving advice to people going to residential aged care. And uh, so I was listening to the radio one night and I heard the melodic tones of the CEO of King Kong telling me what I wanted to hear. We probably were underutilising the internet. And there was Sabri telling me 
how to use it differently. Then once you've captured those, you know, any place is a starting point. You want to get whether it's written or iPhone or proper production crew, whatever you can get, get them. And then I would suggest, you know, really pushing towards the video side of things. However, not everybody's comfortable in front of camera or is comfortable giving you a video testimonial. So let's start with the written testimonial. If they give you a written one, you want to basically put them everywhere. You want to put them on your landing pages. You want to put them on your proposals. You can even put them in email signatures. You basically just want to get them you know, in front of as many people as you possibly can. And you really want to focus on your client's results doing all the talking about how good you are. You know, the whole guru-centric model is really to have somebody out there as a consultant talking about how great they are, right? And just saying like, I'm really good, this is all the stuff that I've done. And the most powerful thing to do is really to let, you know, your, your client's results speak for yourself and let that be the proof in how good you are. And, and that's where you capture it in the form of, you know, testimonials. Now, let's move forward to, you know, the basic kind of iPhone video testimonials. Now this is like very easy to do, people can do it very very quickly, there's not a whole lot of involvement that it takes, they can shoot it and just send it across to you and clients generally like it if they don't mind being on camera. What's up Start and Scale family, this is Gamal Kadner. I am an entrepreneur here in Atlanta. Officially we launched our brand uh, 30 days before the course came out. Very limited growth, we probably did one to two thousand dollars in revenue. And man, I kid you not, in the first 30 days of your course, our store launched to over 10K. I kid you not. You want to basically give them a, a simple framework and just say, you know, if you could just tell the people in your own words, you don't want to script it because if it's scripted, one, it's unnatural and you want it to feel really genuine and coming from the heart. So it needs to come from the heart. And the way that you do that is you can just say, look, if you could just say, you know, the problems that you were experiencing before working together and how I helped you solve them and where you are now and how your life has changed since working together. And that's a pretty simple framework to use and you get them to shoot that. Same with the video crew, it's the same kind of format, you just send it out there, it's higher production value and you can go in and probe a little bit deeper. Now, the use in a video testimonial or case study is different from the written one, right? So with the video case study, you want to use a strategy that I call the King Kong blanket. It's where you really just cover them up and they can't go anywhere without seeing these videos or these testimonials. And the best way to leverage them that we've found, you know, is to put them in your email sequences that go out with like, you know, a thumbnail of the video and then it goes out to a page where they can watch that. You want to use them in your retargeting on Instagram and also Facebook ads and have those video testimonials basically come up and follow those people. Another good tip is to use them in YouTube retargeting. So you can retarget people that visit your landing pages or visit your website and your offer pages on YouTube ads. So when they go over to YouTube, um, they've remarketed with those video testimonials. And they're really just like, you're just covering them up everywhere they look that there's people out there in the marketplace saying great things about you. And, and that really is selling through other people and having like the results that you're providing people do all the grunt work and heavy lifting for you. So get creative, use them everywhere that you possibly can. Um, you know, you can put an email, you can put a PS at the bottom of your email signature and saying, you know, PS to see some of the phenomenal results that we're currently achieving, click on this link and then it would go through to watching that video testimonial. Once you've collected a whole bunch of these video testimonials, then you just want to do some basic editing and and put them all together as like one master testimonial that has the best pieces from all those video testimonials that you can kind of leverage and use, you know, across all those different channels where it's really a summary and it kind of builds into a crescendo of all the positive things that people are saying about you. And a side note on that, with those individual video testimonials, you want to list them all out individually in like one after another on your landing page. So when people look at it, they're like, oh wow, that's just undeniable proof. Like there's like 10, 15 different testimonials and it's from all different walks of life. So you don't just want to get like video testimonials from one type of customer or just females and not males. You want to have a nice mix and a, a kind of different list of avatars of your customer so you really cover off all the different types of people that you work with.
So to recap, you know, you don't want to rely on referrals as your sole way to get new customers. And by going through this process and providing your clients amazing results, you'll get more referrals than you've ever had doing anything else. Now, another thing is you also want to get to that point where you're collecting as many testimonials and video testimonials as you possibly can, and then leveraging to that to do a lot of the selling for you and a lot of the grunt work and answer any of those hesitations that people might have from working with you through past case studies and you know successes that you've had with other clients and then you want to use them and leverage them across all media channels that you possibly can to cover people in the blanket of the success that you're achieving in your space. So the action item for this video is just to basically go out there and focus on getting one client testimonial. You may have past clients that you can reach out to. And this is like one of those topics where, you know, some people aren't confident asking for a testimonial. You know, if you've provided great results, just go out there and just say, hey, it would really mean a lot if you could do this video testimonial and I would really appreciate it. You don't need to incentivize them with price or discounts in your service. Those things are just tacky. What you just want to do is, is just rely on that relationship and the results that you've provided to that client and just let them know that it would really mean a lot if they could do this for you. So go ahead, get one of those testimonials and share it in the Facebook group.